Neat, right? Actually, I'm very excited about this because, like, I kind of just like made this on a whim last night. And and no, like, it, he makes shadow sounds as well. Um, and he has shadow's abilities, like, he can't do the bouncy thing that Sonic can do, like the shadow. Um, so so this is pretty fun. And I, I messed around and I tried like loading some different characters into different stages. Now that now that we know like the line of code that controls this, um, like I'm, go I'm gonna set this breakpoint and I'll I'll pick like uh. Yeah, I'll pick like, um, like Mission Street and break, um, and this will load like the Tails mech, um, right before it stores, let's go register 4, oh you can't see, register 4 is 6, so we can presume that 6 is like, um, the Tails mech character ID, um, so let's try changing this to 1 again, see if we can like load Shadow. Um, let it store it, and resume our execution. And look at that. I'm Shadow on the Mission Street. I can make the cars go flying. I experimented with this a little bit, and that helped me this not much out of the way. But, um, I tried loading, like, Max into, like, Sonic stage, but most of the time they just, like, die immediately. They, like, fall in the hole or something, and, like, clip through the stage, and it causes all kinds of, like, hot things, generally. Um, but it's fun to mess around with, and why don't we write a code that, um, loads Shadow into all the Sonic stages? It's something that probably won't really break the game, because Shadow is very similar to Sonic. Um, and it'll, it'll be like a neat little thing. And we could actually, we could go farther, and I won't, I won't do it in this stream, but we could even do something that like, if you hold R while the stage is loading, then it'll load Shadow instead of Sonic or something like that. And then we need to figure out like the memory addresses that will fuck in puts and just like, just like, it's really not that hard. But for now, why don't we just write a code that s checks if it's a Sonic stage, and it loads Shadow instead. Um, oh yeah, and I did try loading, like, non-mech Tails and non-mech Eggman, um, but there must be some other memory address that controls that because it just loads, like, mech Tails and mech Eggman. I was not successful in doing that. So, and I, I wasn't able to load, like, like, Amy or, like, the other random, like, Metal Sonic or the other multiplayer guys either. I don't know. I haven't messed around with it that much. Um... I don't know if I will. I would rather focus on doing other stuff with Sonic Adventure 2. But anyway, um, we have our line of code. Um, specifically, it is... Uh, I have to wait to <clears throat> anyway, specifically, our line of code is... This this line right here is the line that stores the variable to the memory address. So what we need to do is we need to look at this register like sometime before it stores it. It really doesn't matter where. Um, we'll do it like right right here on this like random pair function. But anyway, what what we want to do now is we want to write a code that checks if register four is zero, and if it is, then we're going to change it to one. Which basically says, like, if it's Sonic that's going to load, load Shadow instead. So that's what we're going to do. So we need to remember this memory address right here. That's what we're injecting into, more or less. This one right here. Um, so let's go over to... ASM Weird. Um, and now we're going to write a C2 code, which injects our own assembly code into the game. 
So the address that we want to inject into is the one that we just copied, which is this one. Um, again, looking at Dolphin, like this is like the compa random compare function. I don't know what this does, but the important thing is it's basically right before the store function. So, like when execution hits this, we're going to inject our own code into here. So, um, let's go back to ASM weird. So what we want to do is we want to check register 4, and if it equals 0, then we want to set it to 1. So the first thing we want to do is we want to compare our 4 to 0, because 0 is Sonic's ID. And if it's, if it's equal to 0, we don't want to do anything, so I'm just going to put a branch right here. Um, and then I'll finish. I'll finish this up real quick. But um, so what you're seeing is we make the comparison. Is R four zero? Um, or actually, it's not equal to zero. Sorry. Um, we're asking is R four equal to zero? In other words, is our character Sonic? If it's not equal to zero, then we want to branch. 8 means two lines away, so we're going to branch down to this function right here. So that's if the character is not equal to 0. If the character is not Sonic, then we are skipping this line of code, and we are just branching right down to the next line. But if the character is Sonic, if R4 is 0, then this branch gets ignored, because this is branch of not equal. Well, it is equal, so this actually doesn't execute, and it's going to load this instead. So we're comparing register 4. If it's Sonic, then we are going to load 1 into register 4. If it's not Sonic, then it's just going to branch and skip that. The one thing that we need to be extra careful about is I'm going to bring up Dolphin right here. This is the line of code that we're injecting into. This actually gets completely overwritten, this line of code. So that could do some game breaking things if you just like overwrite lines of code like that so we need to make sure that this function right here or this instruction right here um, gets preserved and so we actually need to add that instruction to the end of our code like that um, so now this is the address that we're injecting into this is our code and when we click on this button it gives us a C2 code um, which does just that. It takes this uh, assembly code and it injects it into that spot in the game. So I will demonstrate that now. Copy this. Uh, bring up Notepad again. And go into the Sonic Adventure 2 config file. Um, create a new Gecko code. Sonic Stages Load Shadow. Paste that in. Um, sorry, that should be dollar sign and a plus. Um, and I will s save this. And now let's go back to Dolphin. Um, and I'll load up Sonic Adventure 2. Um, I'll take off the breakpoint that we created because we don't need that anymore. So before I actually load a stage, I want to show you what's going on here. And this is the line that we injected into. You can see before it was like the compare R3 to 0. Now it's just this random branch function. Um, so this branch is the code. This is what I mean by injecting code. It puts a branch here, and if we follow this branch, this is the code that I just wrote. Compare R4 to 0, branch of not equal, load load R4 1 and then the original line compare R3 to 0 and then there's a nope which is it does nothing literally it's just like an empty line of code and then it branches back follow this branch and you can see we're back to where we were before um, and so I'll set a breakpoint here just so we can see ourselves step through it I'll load up uh, Green Forest the code breaks so now we can watch it happen we step it branches to our custom function, compares R4 to 0, 
So let's look at our registers real quick so we can see what's going on. R4 is 0 because we're loading Sonic, right? So R4 is 0. Branch if not equal to 0. Um, so it's not going to branch because, well, it is equal to 0. So now we hit this line of code. Load 1 to R4. So after I step through this, it does just that. Let's go back to our registers and we can see that R4 is now equal to 1. Um, and then again, this is the original line that was there, compare R3 to 0. And we should keep that there just for preservation of the original code. Step and branch back. And we have now returned. And so if this works out, which it should, now Shadow is automatically loaded into Sonic Stages. So I'm going to back up, load like another Sonic Stage with Metal Harbor, and it should work. Look at that. And like I said, you can like, I mean, you're writing your own game code here, you can do literally whatever you want. You can do something that like, if you hold R, then it loads Shadow instead of Sonic. Or you can even like, if you're holding R, then like, it loads Shadow instead of Sonic, it loads Rouge instead of Knuckles, it loads like, Eggman instead of Tails. Like, you can put in like, literally whatever you want, modify this any way you want. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that we do when writing complex codes for like Project Network. Um, you know, cool functions that like have not been used in the game. Um, like in the case of the stage strike code that I wrote, it basically says like if, if you press X, then like modify the game memory in this way that causes the stage icon to disappear from the screen. Um, you know, it can get very, very complicated. Sometimes it's complicated, sometimes it's very simple. Like in this case, I just wrote like a four-line code that allows you to load Shadow on the Sonic stages. There are other simple ones uh, that do like some very useful things, such as Brawl's Disable Tripping Code is like a very simple code as well, things like that. So the difficulty varies like depending on what you're doing. Um, and when learning this stuff, it's good to start simple, which is why I you know, went through relatively simple stuff in this stream. So yeah, that pretty much wraps things up. That's all I had planned. Um, if you guys want to ask questions or anything like that, then you can do so now. I'm just going to finish this stage real quick. Alright, so if you have questions, you can ask them now. Besides that, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed this session. If you would like to learn some more advanced stuff, then feel free to bug me, and I'll think about uh, running another one of these. Um, as I mentioned in the future, I'll be releasing some of the codes that I wrote for Project M, um, along with documentation and commenting in the assembly so you can like really understand what's going on in the codes. Um, and I might even release like a 
you know, some some videos kind of explaining the process of of making them and things like that. It really depends on how busy I am and what I feel like feel like doing. So. And if you didn't learn anything, then I'm sorry for wasting your time. 